Hey guys, it's Alexandra. Today we're going to be talking to Kirsten. Uh, when the pandemic first hit, her family faced a lot of hardships and her dad's business almost went under. She was picking up a bunch of side jobs to try to support her family and ended up finding huge success in the stock market and taking a whole year to just stay trade and winning, you know, thousands and thousands. So she ended up going viral, you know, for sharing her tips for first time investors and how to succeed in stocks. Uh, I think you should definitely stay tuned to check out our interview and learn more about the stock market and you can subscribe for more videos. All right. Thank you so much. Watch the stock market completely change my life in a year. A year ago, COVID hit, had to move out of school. My dad's business had just been shut down because of it. So I started working at a grocery store. I was then responsible for family bills. So I started working another job at night. I realized I also had no money to go to school. I just started in the stock market with $500. I made pennies, dollars. That was my first real win. I ended up contributing about 10 grand into the market. Slowly and slowly it kept going up. Um, I realized I was getting good at this. I became obsessed with the stock market. Started getting really good, making watch lists every single day, doing what I could. Um, yep, I hit a goal right there. I cried. Uh, this was a truly unreal moment, being able to take my dad. Um, I created this account, bought things, and today, this week, I was interviewed for the New York Times. Anything is possible. If you're new to investing and have no idea where to start, I got gotcha. All right, some tips and lessons that I have learned in the stock market. Okay, a bunch of simple investing terms that you should know before getting started in the market. How did you get, like, what is your journey? And talk about how, you know, COVID brought about this, you know, passion for investing right. that you have and kind of that, you know, how that all played out for you. Yeah. Okay. So basically last year I was attending school. I was a sophomore, went to the university of Kansas. Um, I was just majoring general business. Didn't really quite know exactly what I wanted to do, but something in business realm. Um, I, a few guys got me interested, sorry, <laughs> got me interested into rock chalk investment club, which was just our school's investment club. I went to one of those meetings, was interested, still didn't really know how to like get involved and didn't quite exactly spark it, but it, it got the interest going. Um, and then I think it was like two weeks after that was when like COVID like really hit and schools completely shut down and everything. Um, and so I kind of didn't know what to do. I, I'm a very like loud outgoing person, very in school type of person. So once everything shifted to online, that was a dramatic shift for me. Cause I was like, uh, I, don't, I don't really know how I can do this. Um, but basically, yeah, once school like went to online and stuff, I started working a few different jobs and a few different things in my family happened. And then I just was like, you know what, let's start in the stock market. Uh, so it was kind of, it was an interest, but then the pandemic had brought along, you know, everything hitting all time lows for years in a row, hit all those lows. So I was like, well, if we, if I get in now, then I can hopefully take advantage of this and make it a lot easier for me to kind of let the market grow for me. So that was, that was initially how I got into it. Awesome. So can you talk a little bit about, you know, your first big win and what that was like? Yeah. Okay. Um, it's so like, I only started with, I started with $500 for my very first one and it was Carnival Cruise Line. And then after that, I slowly started putting more in. So it's like, it's so weird because your biggest wins slowly start to change, obviously as much money as you're putting into it. Right. So like, I think within like two weeks though, I was up like 20% on that Carnival, which was like, unheard of for like a newbie in the market but I was I, I saw the potential of something being like dipping at all-time lows and being able to take advantage of that so carnival is like my first kind of win but it was like at so low that the 20 percent was still not huge and I hadn't invested that much um but it, everything just started to build upon itself and then I was actually able to start doing swing trading so I was holding things for just a few days to weeks and then as I slowly got better and got past a few money restrictions that you have to get past, um, once I started day trading was when like things started to really change for me. And I was able to make like, okay, cool. We're making five grand in two minutes, like crazy stuff like that. So that was definitely when there was a dramatic shift for me.
Yes. And it's so, you know, heartwarming. You, you tell a little bit about your story of how your dad, your dad's business went under, right? Right. And yeah. Then- it was, didn't quite go under, but it was paused or yeah, <laughs> it had to be closed during COVID. So, yeah. So how were you able to use that to kind of, um, you know, support your family? It was definitely just like, you know, I'm here to help out and I'm doing as much as I can. And so it was just, it was all a team effort, but like, it was definitely really cool to have me be able to start something so fresh and so new and be like really successful at it. (laughs) Um, Like, so that was obviously incredible to see. And then obviously having, making these gains was great to share with everyone, you know? Yes, for sure. And I think, you know, um, there's a lot of different like apps and stuff like that. And I feel like stock market is something that a lot of people are intimidated by and it's, yeah. I feel it's hard to navigate. So for people that, you know, see your success and are like, oh my God, I want to do that. I think I can do that. What mm-hmm. would be your kind of advice for like their starting points? Like where, what to look for, where to even start with that? Right. Yeah. Honestly, like I, like for me, it was like, you're never going to learn if you don't just put a little bit of money in and go for it. Like I like to start telling people is the stock market is only as complicated as you want to make it and is only like going to take as much risk as you want to take. If you want to buy one $50 stock, buy it, hold it for three years. Awesome. That, then that's all you have to do. But if you want to start making the crazy money, obviously there's going to be more risk and the more money you put in, the more, more, uh, more reward you can have. But it's just definitely just starting to take the initiative and even having the interest to get started is definitely where it all starts. And then once you start to get good at, okay, maybe like you start out, obviously like when I started out, I didn't think I was going to become like a crazy day trader or anything, Um, but like start out small because then if you are able to grasp some of those concepts early on, everything builds along each other. And then obviously you can be very successful with it. Yeah. So you, your first investment was in Carnival. How did you decide what to like, what, how do you right. how you advise someone to decide what to even, you know, put their money toward? Yeah. Okay. So when I did it during everything was crashing. So I started looking at the 52 week highs and seeing what stocks were the furthest from those highs, basically which stocks were the most affected from directly COVID. Um, so I used that in like the cruise industry, travel industry, all of the luxury and industry stuff like that was by far the most hit. I mean, obviously tech companies, everything was also hit, but for me, when I got started, it was like the more obvious choice because the market can kind of work for you because essentially like, as we see like dips happen over time and eventually they're going to go up. Obviously this isn't true for every company, but definitely being able to like take advantage of some of these dips. Like I hate to say it, but like just when things are happening in the country and like the nation or whatever, and there's a dip in the market, like you have to be able to capitalize and recognize that, you know, this isn't really a direct output of the company itself, but maybe as the market as a whole, or maybe something, some type of plan that's happening in the government. Okay. Take advantage of this dip. This is a great way to start because then the market will kind of carry you up a little bit. It's a good point. I didn't think about, I always think about <laughs> yeah. it. Like you think you want to invest in successful companies, like right. they are already successful. But that's a good point. If you know that they're dropping and the only choice is that they're going to eventually come back up, then that's right. Sense. Yeah. So as far as like Robinhood and apps like that, what do you use for, um, you know, to play? Mm-hmm. I use Fidelity. That's and the one I use like on my laptop. I've never, I never really sort of did this trading on my phone. So that's why Robinhood was never really like yeah. <laughs> an option. Yeah. Um, how do you think, you know, do you, did you find any trials and errors, anything you thought was like misunderstood about playing? Um, yeah, so definitely when I first started investing, I had to, I had to reach out to some of the guys in that investment club. Cause I was like, I like, what does this type of sale mean? I don't understand. Like, do I just hit buy and do I just hit sell? And like, I had absolutely no idea in the beginning. I was completely a newbie. So it was definitely trial and error just to like legitimately learn how to buy and sell a stock. And I think that's like what I like to say is you're never going to get started if you don't like physically actually go through the motions, because that was a learning process of itself, just hitting the buttons and being like, okay, like this, this happened. This was a transaction. I understand what happened. And just being, being able to understand that process 
just the very base fundamentals to be able to go forward. Yeah. And do you, are you working still now or are you just doing stocks? Um, so I was doing stocks for a full year and now I'm back moved to um, a lake house that I typically, I've always just like bartended and served here during the nights, um, during the summertime. So that's where I am right now, but I still day, day trade during the day. So. And when you decided to make videos, you know, what are you hoping um, to gain? What are you hoping people will gain from that? Yeah, definitely. I think one of the, like the best things that I can say is like, I was exactly in anyone's shoes who knows no nothing about the stock market literally a year ago. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it was cool because I've just, I didn't buy a course. I didn't really have any crazy resource. Like I had some of these guys in the club that helped me lead me in the right direction, but a lot of it, I just kind of started YouTubing and looking at books and podcasts and just kind of navigating it all on my own. And I think I like to try to teach that, you know, anyone it's accessible to anyone, as long as you put the dedication through it. Yes, awesome. And what are you working toward now? Like, what are you um, investing in currently? Uh, a little bit of everything. <laughs> um, I really love EVs, the EV sector, electric vehicles. Um, I love Tesla. It's a crazy stock to ride, but I love it. Um, trying to think of some of my other long-term holds, but a lot of the stuff that I'm doing right now is the day trading. So it's like these crazy high volatile stocks that I only hold on to for a few minutes to a few hours during the day and then out of them. And then the next day, I don't even remember their name and I'm moving along and just doing it all again. So that's awesome. Well, good luck with everything. I really enjoyed um, hearing from you and I really yeah. look forward to following your content. I've always kind of had the interest, but not really yeah. what to do. So I <laughs> yeah, exactly. a lot of people are too. Right. Yeah. And especially like, I feel like there's so much more of a like social media presence, like just this past year that it makes yeah. it, you know, there's so many more young investors coming along right now in the markets. Yes. Awesome. Is there, what would you like to do in the future as far as like business goes? <laughs> See, I have no idea, honestly. Um, I mean, like, so I started in the business, just the business field and business realm, but now obviously I have such a drive for finance and trying to do something like that. So it's, it's definitely shifted my focus into like actually having a narrower idea of business that I want to get into. So something along finance, still kind of learning. Cause it's like, do I want to can't day trade for the rest of my life? At least me personally don't want to do that, but I would love to either teach or help others or, you know, be able to do something managing along that line. So that's awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, so of course. Yes, I'll definitely continue to follow along. I love that you're using what you learned, sharing it with others. <laughs> right, exactly. That's awesome. It's so hard to see people that, you know, have these successes, but then, you know, they go into like, oh, well, you have to pay hundreds of dollars to find out Perfect. like what I'm doing. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's awesome. Good for you. And I'm really glad for your success. I hope you continue to, yeah, you know, you. succeed and, you know, earn, you know, earn all this <laughs> and reach where you want to go. So good luck with all of that. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. I'll definitely be in touch. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. Great meeting you.